Hey everyone, it's PJ here from Flight Mode Nails and I am finally doing a video for you guys. I'm going to switch up my left hand. Um, it's already late, it's 9pm, past 9 and I just want to get this over and done with and um, it's kind of like maybe I'm thinking a freestyle thing. I'm, I think I kind of know what I want to do um, but let's get right into it. I'm going to start off with um, actually filing down the whole bulk of my nails because I really want to try out the Elite um, Balance uh, Balance Elite UV Gel System, as you can see. See that pretty in pink, and I really want to try it out. Oh, you see how the viscosity is quite runny? It's already all over the lid. Ah, I have to be careful with this, actually. All right, my daughter is asleep, so there's no background noise. I've been waiting for this. Um, so here I am, filing down the bulk of my nails using my ceramic bit from Melody Susie. So um, when I first started nails, I did order um, all my, my drill and um, e-bits from Melody Susie, and they've been working really, really well for me so far, and I like them very much. So the ceramic bit, um, here you can see, just filing down all the polish and then trying to get down the bulk of it. Basically, I really want to use this system. Oh, no joke, it has literally been like a week since I filmed the last voiceover when my daughter was crying, and now I finally have time to do finish this voiceover. Anyway, as I was saying, here I am filing off the bulk of my nails using my Melody Susie drill bit. I do this to all my fingers and as you can see I'm trying to get to the lowest layer which is the base. I do have clear on but you can once you start working with gel you can tell what is when it comes to your um, the base natural nail um, and when you filed off the um, hard gel. I believe I have my speed of around 15,000 to 20,000 RPMs. I've kind of got the confidence to put it higher, not like especially knowing that it's so much easier to remove bulk, especially on a higher speed. Okay, so after filing off all the products, I have done my cuticle work, prepped my nails, and now as you can see, this is my natural nail in the middle. How nice does it look? But it's not as long as my other one. So I've got a form and I'm just slightly extending a little bit of the length so we can match the rest of the length of my other nails. As you can see, I had a little bit of a crack right at the side wall there, which I was trying to fill up. Um, and as soon as I am dipping the product in, I'm noticing it is quite a thin viscosity than what I'm used to. So I'm really, really playing around with this product. So I'm trying to fill in both sides because I believe I had both sides cracked just in that little um, portion there. Guys, this thumb is actually my whole natural nail. There's a little bit of leftover old products from my last set, but that's my full-on natural nail underneath. I'm so proud. I don't think I need any tips for this nail anymore, um, but I think I want to keep it this length. Fun fact, guys, every time I do my nails, if I have a long set on, I always, always do short thumbs. <laughs> And the reason for this is so I can buckle up my child. <laughs> anyway, before I get sidetracked, yes, as you saw, I just put a slip layer down, a very thin one, and it's uncured, and I um, go in and grab a dollop again and start peeling it towards my cuticle area as close as I can. Again, this is a new product to me. It's very thin viscosity to what I'm used to, but um, I allow it to float down using that slip layer as a guidance and drag it towards the free edge but eventually it starts falling into the side walls. 
Now I've got my detailer brush here. As you can see, I can see it in this footage right now that's, yes, on that leftish part of the nail. It's quite thin, so I'm trying to drag that product down as well. So here I've put a thin layer on my index finger. I think I've cured it at this point. So now I'm just going to fill in the cuticle area. As you can see, it's quite thin, a little bit too thin there with not much product. So same thing, peeling it towards the cuticle area. This is kind of like a fill really, because I've left that back portion of the cuticle. Um, and you can see that it blends very, very well as I go down and I lightly just feather it down and blend it using very light strokes. So I actually have this spare dotting tooth that I don't use as a dotting tool, but I use it as a cleanup tool. It really, really helps in my side walls, especially when it leaks there. Oh, as you can see, I'm also trying to fill in the gaps over there with the detailed liner brush. So once the application is complete, I wipe the inhibition layer off with a cotton pad and alcohol. I really hate this cotton pad, it leaves so much fluff around. It's annoying. Alright, it's filing time, my gosh. So I file the side walls first, as you can see. Left hand, oh, left side and then the right hand side. I also start filing underside of it to form and perfect the oval shape. As you can see, this middle finger is a little bit blobby. This was due to um, me not being used to the consistency of this gel, so it did run along the form. So at least gel, hard gel, is so easy to file. So. I was able to shape that into place and how I like it. So now I start filing off the surface, creating an even surface and shaping the actual nail. So after hand filing the shape of my nails, I'm using my diamond barrel bit that I recently got from NSI. Um, and this is to help reach the places that I couldn't reach, like the tight areas such as the cuticles and side walls. Perfect for that. Now I'm quickly just buffing down all the nails with a buffing block, just to remove all the scratches because I'm actually doing a negative space kind of design in my head, that's what I'm thinking. So now I'm just cleansing the nail with some alcohol and my nail brush dust cleanser. <laughs> and there you go. That's my application. I'm quite happy as well and I didn't get that much heat spike with this product. Okay, let's get to the art. I've got um, my liner brush that I got from Tanaka Nails, who is my instructor. And this um, gel paint is from Model Ones. It's very, very thick. It's not gonna slide anywhere or drip out of the container. Very, very thick. Good for lines and art. I did use it on my right hand, um, but I really wanted to create some crisp lines. And here I am just making it up on the spot. <laughs> so I decided to do a X-like design on this nail. With my ring finger, I wanted to do like an outlined French tip, like a half French tip. I don't know what you call it, just making that up. As you can see, just drawing a line down and then following the edge of my nail. Me 
I didn't want to stop there so I thought I'd draw another line here and you'll see what I do with that later I've seen some designs like this it reminds me of like you know techie kind of robot I don't know <laughs> abstract lines and here I'm just doing some shapes on my pinky finger I literally just made it up on the spot Now my thumb, I'm just drawing a simple thin cross. So I recently got this Born Pretty Soft PVC Gel and if you seen my last video you could see me molding with it but basically it's a gel that you mold you cure you can add things to it put chrome on top it's awesome it's a really good product and as you can see I'm just picking some um, of it up and you can literally use your hands and I had no idea what I was doing um, I think I wanted to create some sort of like flat round ball on my nail but you'll see what I do next so I've got some holographic flakes which I wanted to actually add to this molding gel and as you can see you can add glitters you can add whatever you want to it um, so I'm just adding that and then you just roll it up and mix it with your fingers it's so fun it's so different So now I decided to get some charms and I decided to go and get like a moon shaped charm and then I just insert it in that little glue gel ball and create my own little 3D blob. So now that I've made that, I've got my caviar beads and I've got black ones here. They're very, very tiny. When I bought them, I thought they would be a little bit bigger than this, but underestimated. Got my nail glue gel. This is for rhinestones and such nail art. It's for model ones. And I, as you can see, I did glue that blob on actually. Did I film it? I think I filmed it. But I just kind of pasted it with a little bit of hard gel and glued that blob on. And now I've got that glue all around the perimeter of that blob and just <laughs> adding some caviar beads. Now I've just decided to get some of that rose gold caviar beads to suit the um, moon and place it in those little gaps just to create some sort of, you know, I don't know. <laughs> so here I've got a mixture of gems and, you know, nail art and charms. I've got some glue and I decided to put some more caviar beads on this as well and a clear rhinestone. So after looking at it, I thought the middle finger still needed some sort of, you know, art liner on there to match the rest. So I've just put one line directly down the middle. 
so here I'm using Tanaka No Wipes Top Coat, which I love. Um, she will be actually opening up her own store here in Perth, so I'm so excited for that. So stay tuned. With this finger, I go around the whole thing, reveal my little blobby moon, whatever you call it. <laughs> I go over the caviar beads just so I can protect the color and keep it on for a longer time. I got a little bit too excited and went over this rhinestone, the clear one, but I'm looking at it now and it actually still looks good. <laughs> After the top coat, I've added cuticle oil and this is my final result. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you soon.